Agisha. Taking Chemistry Plus 2 Section CBSE Solutions Second Part and the Final Part. So we have covered the concentration terms in the first topic and then now we are going to the next topic that is solubility. So what is solubility? What does this solubility mean? Solubility means the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved in a specific amount of solvent. The maximum amount of solute dissolved in a specific amount. The specific amount may be 100 gram. So the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved in a specific amount of solvent is called its solubility. So every solvent has its own solubility. The solubility of every solvent each and every solvent will vary based on its solubility okay so that is called solubility then what you need to study in solubility we need to study the variation in solubility based on temperature and pressure there are three things temperature pressure and nature of solute and solvents but the most important thing is based on temperature and pressure so let us go to the variation of solubility so i already told you that there are three cases but we need to study the solubility variation based on pressure and temperature only that is the most important section in that case we have to consider two conditions the first condition is solid dissolved in liquid so the first condition you can see here is the first condition the temperature and pressure affect solubility for solid dissolved in solute the solid or liquid solute we are considering solid or liquid solute in that case solid or liquid so pressure doesn't have any effect in solid or liquid you already know that pressure only have effect on gaseous state and pressure has no effect in solid or liquid phases so we can eliminate the pressure condition in this case that is solid dissolved in liquid in this case when temperature increases more solute will dissolve in the solution so in this case when temperature increases more solute will dissolve in the solution so we can conclude that when temperature increases solubility also increases and let's go to the second case that is in the case of gas dissolved in liquid in the case of soda water how soda water is prepared you already know that soda water is prepared by dissolving carbon dioxide gas with the high pressure in water so pressure is needed at that case okay so pressure is only needed at that case so pressure will have effect in the case of gas dissolved in liquid so pressure has effect on gas dissolved in liquid and the example is carbon dioxide in water and that is called soda water so in the case of soda water gas dissolved in liquid pressure has effect when pressure increases solubility increases and we know that it is prepared by this called soda water that is 7 up or anything like that sprite the soft waters are prepared by dissolving carbon dioxide in water at a high pressure so high pressure is needed so when pressure increases solubility also increases and what about in the case of temperature you know that these soda water cans always the sprite or seven or whatever the cans are always keep in fridge or refrigerators why to lower their temperature if the temperature is lower then the gas will more dissolve in the solvent otherwise if we, if we just taken that sprite or the soda water out of the fridge and put it in uh, warm temperature or put it in high temperature the gas will go out from that solvent so when temperature increases what will decrease solubility will decrease in the case of temperature only in the condition when gas is dissolved in liquid so in the condition where gas is dissolved in liquid when temperature increases solubility decreases and we need to study the henry's law for that also what is henry's law Henry's law is a relation between partial pressure and solubility. Partial pressure is directly proportional to solubility. 
when partial pressure increases solubility also increases and we have three application in the case of henry's law what are the three applications the first one is making of soda water how soda water is prepared by dissolving carbon dioxide in water at a high temperature soda water is prepared and second case the people living in high altitude cannot think properly because in high altitude when altitude increases pressure will decrease so the amount of oxygen dissolved in that atmospheric air will also decrease that is solubility of oxygen will decrease so the people in high altitudes will not get sufficient amount of oxygen and they cannot think properly and that condition is called anoxia and in the case of scuba divers also they will also suffer such a kind of problems because we they always go to the down the altitude decreases when altitude decreases solubility also decreases so these are the three applications of henry's law and let's go to the next section vapor pressure here you can see a vessel taken half of water the remaining portion will be the vapors water vapors so vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by these vapors on the surface of this liquid so the pressure exerted by vapors on the surface of this liquid is called a vapor pressure okay and next one is raoult's law this raoult's law is based on this partial vapor pressure and this raoult's law means the partial vapor pressure will be always proportional to its solubility and we can write this as a derivation that is the partial vapor pressure if you are taking the partial vapor pressure of the solvent pa then it is the product of p0 a into chi a what is chi a mole fraction of the solvent if we are taking the partial vapor pressure of the solute that is pb then it will be equal to p0 b into chi b so this is the equation of raoult's law and raoult's law is very much important because we need to study ideal solutions and non ideal solution and it is based on doubt raoult's law and in the case of ideal solution there are four conditions in ideal solutions the first condition is here the first condition is here in the screen that is the solutions obey raoult's law are called ideal solution so the solutions which does no ideal solutions are called the solutions which obey raoult's law are called ideal solution so the solution which does not obey raoult's law are called non ideal solution that's it okay the solutions which obey raoult's law are called ideal solutions and the solution which does not obey raoult's law are called non ideal solutions okay and next one what is the next thing the conditions of ideal solution there are four conditions of ideal solution the first condition is here in the screen and the second condition that is delta v mixing that is delta volume mixing is equal to zero what do you mean by this delta volume mixing what are mixing in a solution we are dealing with binary solution so we are dealing with a two component solution that is solute and solvent when we mix solute and solvent the volume will not change okay the mixing of solute and solvent will not make the volume to change so there is no change in volume that is delta v mixing will be equal to zero that is only in the case of ideal solution then the second the second condition is over then let's go to the third condition that is enthalpy in the case of enthalpy in the case of enthalpy the delta x mixing will be always equal to zero what is this term called enthalpy the amount of heat liberate or the amount of heat absorbed the total heat or the total energy is called enthalpy within the system is called enthalpy in the case of uh, if we are putting some cement in water what will you feel 
will be hot because it is releasing temperature the temperature is released there but if we have taken a like ice cube in our hand what will we feel we feel cold because it is absorbing temperature so there are two condition in one condition heat is re heat is released and the second condition heat is absorbed but in the case of ideal solution heat is neither released nor absorbed the enthalpy change will be equal to zero and the last condition that is based on interaction between the solute and solvent molecules okay that is we know that solvent and solvent molecules has an interaction solvent and solvent molecules has an interaction why if i just put two drops of water in the table and if i just draw a line through the drops it will merge it will converge to become one drop that is that property is called a cohesion always solvent molecules and also solute proper uh, solute molecules also have an interaction between them that is a a interaction a means solvent and also there is b to b interaction there is a to a and b to b interaction this will be always equal to solvent and solute interaction in the case of ideal solution the solvent solvent interaction and the solute solute interaction will be equal to which one it will be equal to the solvent solute interaction okay and the graph is here the graph of ideal gas is represented here and you can see in the left side you can see in the left side the mole fraction of solvent is 1 and mole fraction of solute is 0 okay and if we go to the right hand side right hand side in the x axis mole fraction of solute is increasing the mole fraction of solute is increasing so from left to right mole fraction of solute is increasing and y axis vapor pressure partial vapor pressure is also increasing okay so if we go to left to right the mole fraction of solute will increase so at the first stage initial stage the mole fraction of solvent solute is zero kai b is equal to zero and in the right hand side the mole fraction of solute is one so it is maximum you can see it is maximum that is p0 b will also maximum okay and when it comes to left hand side it will be become lesser lesser and become zero that is represented as p0 b to e b and in the case of solvent also in the left hand side chi b is equal to 1 because it is maximum when chi b is equal chi a is equal to 1 partial pressure partial vapor pressure of solvent will be also equal to 1 that is p0 a will be also equal to high value so p0 b a will decrease from left to right and that is illustrated in this graph and the next one is non ideal solution we already studied about ideal solution the non ideal solution is just opposite of this ideal solution in the case of ideal solution what are the four conditions it obey raoult's law so in the case of non ideal solution it does not obey raoult's law that is in the screen and the second condition the second condition is we already discussed in the case of ideal solution the mixing of two in the case of ideal solution the mixing of two components that is solute and solvent will not change the volume that is in the case of ideal solution delta v mixing will be equal to zero only in the case of ideal solution now we are dealing with non ideal solution so in the case of non ideal solution delta v mixing will be not equal to zero that is the second condition let's go to the third condition in the third condition in the case of ideal solution we studied that in the case of ideal solutions what will we study delta h in the case of ideal solution delta h mixing 
delta H mixing is equal to 0. That is, there is no heat is released or no heat is absorbed in ideal solution. But here, we are dealing with a non-ideal solution. Therefore, it will be not equal to 0. And third condition, sorry, third condition is over. We are going to the final condition that is interaction. In the case of ideal solution, the AA interaction and BB interaction that is solute, solute interaction, solvent, solvent interaction is equal to the solvent and solute interaction. But here it will not be equal to solvent and solute interaction. That is fourth condition is AA interaction, solvent, solvent interaction and solute, solute interaction will not be equal to solvent solute interaction so this is in the case of non-ideal solution and there are two deviations from the ideal behavior in the case of non-ideal solution there are two deviations the first case is positive deviation the first case is positive deviation in here you can see that the vapor pressure increased how the vapor pressure increased the vapor pressure here increased because a to B interaction becomes weaker. If the A to B interaction becomes weaker, then the gas, the vapors will easily escapable from the surface of the liquid. So the amount of vapors will increase and the whole vapor will exert the pressure on the surface of the liquid and that's how the vapor pressure increase. Okay. When the solute solvent interaction becomes weaker the gas will easily escape from the surface of the liquid and more vapors will come out when more vapors come out then more pressure will be exert on the surface that is called a vapor pressure that is vapor pressure also increases that's how the vapor pressure increase in the case of positive deviation and the gap will be like this and in the case of negative deviation what will happen the A to B interaction becomes stronger. The A to B interaction becomes stronger. And what will happen? The vapor pressure will decreases. You can see the vapor pressure will decreases. And there are the two graphs illustrated here. It is very much important. So, let's go to the next topic that is colligative properties. What is colligative properties? The properties only depend upon the number of particles is called colligative property. Normally, we buy things based on quality. But in the case of colligative property, they only buy things only in the base on number of particles. How many number of particles are available there? So, there may be some issues caused by this conclusion. Okay, that, that we will discuss in later. Let's first go to this colligative properties topic. So, colligative properties are the properties that only based on the number of solute particles. They depend on only the number of solute particles. And there are four colligative properties that is also represented here. That is relative lowering of vapor pressure. The second one is elevation in boiling point. Depression in flow is decreasing point and the last one is osmotic pressure. There are four colligative properties and these four colligative properties are mainly used to find out the molecular mass of the solute. Okay. And here we are going to the first colligative property. Before going to that, you must understand one thing. When a solute is added to a solvent, its vapor pressure will decrease. Just write it down. When a solute is added to a solvent, its vapor pressure will decrease. The first case. The second case is when a solute is added to a solvent, its boiling point will elevate. What does it mean? The boiling point elevation. That means the boiling point will increase. Okay. Then the third case is when a solute is added to a solvent, its freezing point will decrease. So just Remember that three things, when a solute is added to a solvent, its boiling point will increase. When a solute is added to a solvent, its vapor pressure will decrease. When a solute is added to a solvent, its freezing point will decrease. Okay. So let's go to the first topic. 
in colligative properties that is relative lowering of vapor pressure here you can see this is a device that you used to measure vapor pressure difference and in the first case alone solvent is taken so the difference in vapor pressure you can see the difference in vapor pressure this much is the vapor pressure you can see here this much is a vapor pressure here and when i just mixed it with the solute i just add at solute to the solvent the what happens to the vapor pressure you can see here the vapor pressure decrease the value decreased here so when a solute is added to a solvent its vapor pressure will decrease and we can mention that in the equation normally the vapor pressure is p0 a and the change is p0 from p0 a it changes to p a p0 a means the pure vapor pressure pure partial vapor pressure of the solvent and it changes to just partial vapor pressure of the solvent that is pa and this is the lowering of vapor pressure and we can just this is lowering of vapor pressure and this one is the lowering of vapor pressure and we can write this one as delta pa we can write this one as delta pa and what is the relative lowering of vapor pressure just compare it to the real one that is p0a delta pa by p0a this is called relative lowering of vapor pressure and this will be equal to mole fraction of b this will be equal to mole fraction of b so let's go to the derivation delta pa divided by p0 is equal to chi b and you know that what is the equation for chi b n a n b by n a plus n b so the equation changes number of moles of b divided by n a plus n b but in here the n b value is very very smaller as compared to the value of n a number of moles of solvents this n a n b value is very very smaller so we can neglect the n b value in the denominator so the equation will becomes n b by n a okay so we can write the final equation as final derivation as delta p a by p0 a is equal to n b what is n b w b divided by m b and what is n a n a means w a and this division again division it becomes in the numerator it goes to the numerator and it will become m a so this is a no normal equation and we can find out the m b value from this equation we can find out the m b value from every colligative properties we need to find out the molecular mass of the solute that is m b will be equal to w b into m a normally it is like that divided by w a into this delta p a goes to the denominator delta p a and this the p 0 a will go to the numerator so this is the final equation to find out the molecular mass of the solute is it clear so this equation will help us to find out the molecular mass of the solute when there is a relative lowering in the vapor pressure of the solution so let's go to the next one that is elevation in boiling point when already i told you when a solute is dissolved in a solvent its boiling point will elevate that means increase its boiling point will increase and the difference in that boiling point is delta tb this delta tb is directly proportional to molality to change that proportionality same just multiply it with a constant that is kb kb is called molar elevation constant okay kb is called molar elevation constant or ebullioscopic constant and what is m m is molality so let, let us expand the molality equation that is wb into 1000 divided by mb into wa and also from here from this equation we can find out the mb value the mb equation and the equation will becomes 
एम बी इज इक्वल टू नॉर्मली देर इज के बी इंटू डब्ल्यू बी इंटू थाउजेंड एंड इट डिवाइडेड बाई दिस डेल्टा बी विल गो टू द डिनोमिनेटर डेल्टा बी इंटू डब्ल्यू ए दिस विल बी द फाइनल इक्वेशन टू फाइंड आउट द एलिवेशन इन बॉइंग पॉइंट सो दिस इक्वेशन इज यूज इन द प्रॉब्लम सो लेट एस गो टू द थर्ड क्वालिगेटिव प्रॉपर्टी दैट इज depression in freezing point that also i already told you that when a solute is added to a solvent its freezing point will also decrease and there is a change in this freezing point that is called the delta tf and that will also directly proportional to molality and the proportional design to change the proportional design it is multiplied with a constant that is Cryoscopic constant or molar depression constant Kf into m, and you know the value of m that is delta Tf is equal to Kf into Wb into thousand divided by mb into Wa, and we need to find out what we need to find out here. In every colligative property case, we need to find out the molecular mass of the solute that is mb. so the equation mb will be equal to kf into wb into 1000 divided by delta tf into wa so this is the final equation in the case of depression in freezing point and the last one is osmosis osmosis is not a colligative property osmotic pressure is a colligative property before studying osmotic pressure we need to study what is osmosis you already studied osmosis in botany section plus 1 so what is osmosis normally the flow is from always the flow in nature is from higher level to lower level the water will flow from higher level to lower level the ball will roll from higher ground level to lower ground level the heat will flow from higher temperature to lower temperature always if the if if, if you are taking in the case of current also the current will also flow from Higher potential to lower potential. Okay, but if we separated this with a semi-permeable membrane, semi-permeable membrane. The real-life examples of semi-permeable membrane is just the skin of uh, egg. That is an example of semi-permeable membrane. Also, animal skins are also taken as semi-permeable membranes. Okay, so if we have separated this with a semi-permeable, normally. the flow is from higher concentration to lower concentration but if we just separate it with a semi permeable membrane the solvent molecules will flow from lower concentration to higher concentration you can see in the figure the lower concentration the solvent molecules will flow from the lower concentration to the higher concentration why solute molecules they be their constant in the case of solute molecules it is higher as compared to the solvent molecules the size of solute molecules will be always higher as compared to the size of solvent molecules so these semi permeable membrane has small holes only so only solvent molecules flow through it okay that is in the case of osmosis and the next one is osmotic pressure and also reverse osmosis is there that i will take later first let's go to the osmotic pressure if i apply a pressure to it the flow will reduce and finally the flow will stop that pressure is called osmotic pressure and it is represented by pi and pi is equal to crp the c is called concentration r is gas constant and t is the temperature what is c c is number of moles per volume so we can change this equation pi is equal to number of moles per volume rt and this will also changes to pi v is equal to nrt and what are we are dealing with we are dealing with the number of moles of solute so n means number of moles of solute n means nb what is this nb pi b pi v is equal to wb by mb r t we need to find out the value of mb so mb is equal to wb r t divided by pi v so this is the final equation you need to find out 
and the last colligative property that is osmotic pressure and there is one more thing that is reverse osmosis i already told you that if i apply osmotic pressure this process will reverse this process will reverse and the flow of solvent particles from higher concentration to lower concentration will occur that is called reverse osmosis only the solvent will flow the solute will stay there because there is a semi permeable membrane barrier there so this can be used in the desalination process or the purification of sea water the salt will stay there and only the pure water will come out through the semi permeable membrane and it is represented here okay so the portion is over good luck with your exam and the mcqs will we will discuss in the next class thank you students